going on YouTube? Thank you so much for tuning in yet again. See, we got some new subscribers, so welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for subbing. If you don't know about me, I'm a lawn care provider here in um, Round Lake, Illinois, northwest suburbs of, uh, of Illinois here. And, um, you know, I'm looking into getting into snow removal this year. have always kind of had it in the back of my head, but uh, this year is the, the year that I'm finally making the leap. Uh, just put a down payment on my plow and been doing a ton of research of how to how to go about pricing and and um, you know just plowing in general I mean like I said this is my first time um, in this new business venture and it's uh, pretty overwhelming um, I went to visit my parents house and um, I know this guy here his name is Mike he's lived uh, near my parents for as long as I can remember and he's always had a plow and I decided to go up to him and, and talk to him and um, he shared a wealth of knowledge with me I took down his num his number and um, you know was able to make my contract but I had a couple questions for him um, instead of typing things out he said if he can give me a call and um, definitely, um, so I, I wasn't expecting this phone call, uh, but as soon as he called, I ran downstairs, um, turned on my, my GoPro so that you guys can hear our conversation. Again, again this conversation was not scripted, uh, not planned. I mean, it was planned that he was going to call me, but I wasn't sure when. So, um, you know, when I'm asking questions, I'm kind of hesitant. So it's all it was all on the fly. Uh, posting it on YouTube so if anyone here is starting a snow removal business and um, you know hopefully some of these uh, questions that I ask Mike um, will help you with your business as well so let's jump into it guys and um, hopefully you enjoy and find some benefit from this if you do please uh, consider subscribing to my channel and um, yeah um, you know this is a new business venture so I plan on doing more videos and more how-to's and how I got started in snow removal, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly that that comes with starting a new business. Thank you and enjoy. You know, like a snowstorm, you know, the trigger comes up, so you plow one person's house, you know, it's under three inches or whatever, and then, you know, say you go back to the house at like 7 p.m., like what do you charge or like how do you communicate that you need to plow again? Like how do you deal those situations? Uh -huh. On your contract, you said like three inches or zero to three or two to three, whatever, and then three to six. Say if we get like a five inch snowfall, you're probably going to be out there two pushes. Sometimes you can get away with doing one to pay on the time of day. Like if it all happens, say like from like 10 o'clock to four in the morning, you get five inches. You can get away with doing one because they're not, no one's out driving or no one's out looking around. They're all sleeping. So if you get five inches and say it starts 10 in the morning and it goes to 10 at night, you got to be out there two times. So you'll go out there at your starting around your two inch trigger mark and then you'll go back out there and, you know, once the snowfall is completely done and plow again, you're going to charge the double rate or whatever. I do a double rate from three to six. I know a couple of guys that do the base rate times or plus 50 percent so one and a half times the rate i do it two times so say your driveway is 30 dollars for zero to three inches and then from three inches to six inches is 60 dollars and we get a five inch storm that five inch storm is in between the three to six mark variable in your contract so okay. it's going to be the 60 dollar charge but you'll probably be out there two pushes so it's it's only sixty dollars then, right? It, like when you invoice them, you'll you, you'll invoice them for sixty bucks, or yes, is that one twenty? No, sixty. Sixty. So okay, I got it. In the invoicing, I'll put the the date of the storm and how many inches that storm accumulated. Now, I in my contract, I do a twenty four hour period storm because there's sometimes storms can be you know two days long or whatever so whatever that 24-hour period we get from start to finish is what i charge for so okay. if we get five inches i'm gonna write on the contract we got five inches of snow underneath the date and then in the billing area i'll put 
five inches in between the three to six mark charge for sixty dollars. Okay. So the bill would be sixty dollars just for the driveway plowing for that five inch storm. Okay. And it'll be out there two times to push it. Same thing with sidewalks. Like if a sidewalk is five dollars or ten dollars, whatever how big the sidewalk is, say it's five dollars. I'll be shoveling it twice because every time I plow, I'll shovel. So you'll be the two charges. So it'd be five inches of shoveling. So that's two times. So that'd be, if it's $5 each time, that's $10 total. So five inch store, uh, storm would be $60 for the driveway and another $10 for the sidewalk. So it's $70 all day. Okay. For that one five inch stove snowfall. Okay. That's up to you if you want to do a double charge for each like increment. It kind of seems easier, I think. You know, I'm yeah, just trying to keep I, it simple, like, and I, I kind of do like the the double charge. Yeah, I know a guy that he does. Um, he does one to four inches, and then four point one to eight, eight point one to uh, whatever. And he'll do his prices are a little higher than mine, but he'll do. If you get over that, if you're in that 4.1 to 8 tier, it is one, the base rate plus 50%. So it's one and a half times. So say if it's $30 from from one inch to four inch, and then we get that five inch snowfall, so you, you get another tier, it would be not $60, it would be $45. Okay. I don't like doing that because, I mean, I just do it two times the base rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes I sense. don't know. That's just me, but I've seen other people do it. I know another buddy that does it that way. Um, but he charges more per push because he could be pushing four inches. So if he gets a snowfall yeah. that's four inches, he's going out there for one time to charge it once. Under my contract, I'm going out there and charging twice. Yeah. Because no. I'm over. In your contract, too, you have it... Um, I think you have it like two to three inches and three to six. I would put 3.1 inch to six and then 6.1 inch to nine. Because that point one, it could, because what happens if it is a three inch, exactly three inches? Are you charging me for the zero to three inches or are you charging me three to six? Yeah. Yeah. So, so clarify that a little 3. bit more. 3.1, it's more, more clarified. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then, um, so, so it's not, it's, I charge, I don't call it per push. I call it just like the rate. Cause sometimes you could get caught on, if it's a five inch snowfall, you're paying five inches, but that means two plowings, two pushes. But sometimes I get away with just doing one push because it's the time of day. It's a fluffy snow. It's easy. No one's, no one's awake. So there's ways around it. So I, I mean, it's considered per push, but it's really per per inches. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, it's it, a little confused, but uh, I mean, per push versus per inch, it's kind of yeah, like I mean, you, you can do per push. I mean, it's fine. Okay, but it, it, as far as the as the wording, it it, it goes um, rate, it's, not push, right? Like uh, for pricing, it's the rate. Yeah, they call it the rate. Now, um, yeah. when you were explaining your, your kind of your pricing model, um, you know, I I I, I was kind of like now it makes more sense that you're explaining it. So I, I definitely understand that. Like for a, a regular driveway, you charge thirty, and then um, if it's from, I believe you know like three to six, you charge then it's like double, so it's like sixty, and then yeah. and then for the like the next tier of inches, like what was that for, for yours? So uh, you're gonna do it times three then so the fr your base rate is from zero to three say that's thirty dollars and then from 3.1 to six that's your base rate times two so that'd be 30 plus 30 so that's 60 6.1 to nine inches is your base rate times three so that's 30 plus 30 plus 30 is 90 okay so for a 6.1 to nine inch is three times your your base rate, your regular rate. Okay, and then after that's that, how I do it. And after then, that, I do per inch is x amount of dollars. Like if we get like a twelve inch or say eleven inch snowfall, 
I'll put it underneath the 6.9 and then add my per inch to that. So if it's $90 for a nine inch snowfall, and then we get say 11 inches and I'm charging say another $5 per inch after nine, uh, the 10th inch is $5 and the 11th inch is another five. So it's total $10. So it'd be the, the nine inch rate plus $10. Okay. So it'd be $90 plus 10. So it's a hundred dollars total for 11 inch snowfall. Okay. As far as like um, like salt, if I do get into it, what like what what salt should I use? Like where should I buy it? Like, um, for salt, salt's an iffy thing. A lot of customers don't want salt. Some elderly, older couples, clients, they do. Um, like I said, none really none of my clients want salt unless it's like a rare, thick, heavy ice storm, and that's maybe just a couple people, but usually they don't ask it. A commercial, yes, I have to salt every time. But for salting wise, um, the rule of thumb is whatever you buy your bag for times it by three. So if you buy a bag, say for ten dollars, it'd be like a thirty dollar charge okay. to salt. Um usually driveways and sidewalks, it's about it's not even a full bag, it's like a half a bag. Like the normal driveways, like you can fit four cars on. It's like a normal driveway. It's a two by two, they call it. Two cars with two cars wide. Um, so that's a normal driveway. And it's about a half a bag. So it'd be about like $15, $20 to salt the driveway and the sidewalk. Okay. As for salt, you just can get like some regular like rock salt. Um, you can get from the home stores, but they're a little more price. I usually get my salt from like uh, Russo's or Arnton Power, okay. or because uh, they're a little cheaper in price, we can still you know charge a little more. Okay, and um, it, so like I, I for sure have a Russo's by me. Um, you know, it's yeah, you got the one in Haynesville. Yeah, That's yeah. The one I go to. Oh, you do? Nice, man. I'm, yeah. I'm like when you're here, man. Let me know. I'm, I'm right down the street, <laughs> man. I'll I'll meet you oh, up yeah. and say what's up, dude. But like what like in Russo's just just ask for like regular salt or is it like um, yeah it's the, it's the yellow bag it's the rock salt okay. um actually I just called them yesterday they're going for four seventy five a bag okay so it's about two fifty a pallet you don't need that I mean you can just grab a few bags yeah yeah you for probably sure have too many clients if any that ask for it but definitely put that as an option and on your contract I'd put the the price of the salt next to the salting like tier the line just so they know how much salting is if they want it okay or if they call down the road like halfway through the season they're like hey can you come salt just for this one storm okay it's gonna be x amount of money nice dude but the salt prices do go up during the season okay so like right now it's probably the, one of the times it's the cheapest you can get um with russo's i buy like in february it's it might be like five and a half bucks, six bucks. It's not terrible. Um, okay. If you go to like Home Depot, they're like 10, 20 bucks for a bag. So they're pretty expensive there. Okay. Yeah. Um, but definitely you ran next to Russo's. I would just go to Russo's yeah. and just buy. And for sure. I also use salt bags. I keep them in the back of the truck while plowing just to add wheat as ballast. Okay. To keep that so my truck doesn't look like it's nose diving mm -hmm. when the plow is up in the air. Okay, makes sense. Because that will kill your suspension on right. your front end. How many so do keep, you think are, are going to be good back there for like my truck? And where, like, how many do you keep? Um, I usually keep about, like, my plow, it calls for about 700 pounds in the back. Okay. Your plow might be different. It'll tell you how much it's called ballast. Oh, uh, okay. It tells you how much ballast you need in the back but it's around the same it's like around 700 or so so i mean that's like 14 bags or so and i also have um i use like the tubes of sand yeah i've got like four of those back there that I keep at all times and then whatever salt i need for my my lots and whatnot okay question about when the driveways have cars in it and whatnot. yeah like what do you do um, if the whole, if the whole driveway is completely covered with cars, I don't touch it. And I email them like, Hey, I can't get to your property because 
your cars are full. I can't even get my plow truck in. I just, I don't even touch it. I let my customers know ahead of time when there's snow coming, you get your cars off the driveway as possible so I can plow. Um, if there is cars and say it's like you can fit two cars wide, but there's one car in there, I'll try and get my plow in there on an angle and back drag it all and, and, and plow the rest of it and then shovel uh, the sidewalk and shovel up front against the the garage but i try and stay away from the cars from shoveling and plowing at least like two feet two feet because i don't i don't want to be liable if i touch it scratch it ding it whatever i'm not paying for their auto repair okay and also too when you're plowing if you get like super close sometimes you you don't get traction and you skid and you fishtail a little bit so that could that could turn you a little bit into the car too so that's why if you give yourself a little buffer of like two feet or something, it could help. Okay. So don't get too close to the, the cars. Like I've had all my customers for like 10, 10 years, so they know the routine. I've got like three customers this year that I haven't plowed at all. So I'll give them like a heads up. I already verbally told them when I when they signed the contract, like pretty much my stuff. Like I don't come close to cars, try and get the cars in the, dry, in the uh, garage. Or off to at least one side of the driveway so I can plow the one side. Um, but I do not come back around uh, and service. Like, say we get th- we get two inches of snow and I, I'm out there for one push. And I can only do half the driveway because the other half is full of cars. I do not come back out once they move their cars. That's on them. Ah, uh, okay. Like, I got one guy that has, it's like a six-car driveway. And he always has at least four cars on the driveway. So I can only back drag about two spots and I still charge him full, full pay. Okay. And it's just how it is. I mean, people, you know, they need their cars. They have a lot of drivers in the house. It just is what it is. But I won't go back to, to plow it or shovel it. Yeah, definitely. And that, I mean, I think that's something that I, I missed. I, I don't know if I'm going to include it. I think I will, but it's it's something I missed in my uh, agreement. I don't have anything about like, you know, when snow comes, please put your cars in the driveway. I mean, like, yeah. on the street or whatever please, it is, you know. Not on the street because the, the snow plow trucks, but just off to the same side Sa- oh, or same side, the yeah. front of the driveway or in the garage. Just so, you know, you can service the property the best you can. But yeah, I don't, I don't go at least two feet around the cars. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ah, uh, that's why you mentioned that two feet. I thought it was like a safety thing, but well, I mean, it, it, it is a it safety is thing, but it's it also is. like uh Because I don't want to, you know, touch their car. I don't want to pay for a paint job or no, yeah, that's, auto repairs or whatever. That's smart, man. I don't want to be liable for that. Yeah. And like my commercial, I have, I have three feet. Okay. S- sometimes people are just looking for payday. Like I said, I'd put a... Maybe not this season, but you'll know right away once you get up and going with the plow. It takes a pretty draw on your battery and your alternator on your on your truck. <laughs> so I That's would crazy. definitely juice up that alternator. Um, I know some guys do the juicing of the alternator and put two two new batteries in, oh, and wow. that definitely helps. I've never done it. I've always just done the bigger alternator, and that seems to help. Um, my new truck now it comes with the snow plow prep package, which it has a bigger alternator and stuff like that, and that definitely does help. My old truck, it was not a snowplow prep package, and I had to do it all myself. And um, I really didn't have any issues like that, but I do know that Ford with the electronic um, steering can be an issue with the electrical. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't get the Ford as a new truck. Yeah, man. Looking <laughs> forward, just- dude. Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. But uh, I, mean, I was going to ask you something like, um, as far as like practicing, like when I do get it, I mean, you know. Um, oh, yeah. This may sound dumb, but you can't practice like putting the plow on the on the street, right? Cause, like say it doesn't snow, you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, you can. Oh, you can put um, it on the street? Like, yeah, you can try on the street. You're Legally, you're not really supposed to plow the streets. But I mean, if you're just trying just to fuck around with the controls, get used to the up and down and the turning. Like, yeah, it's just, is what it is. 
Okay. You gotta learn somewhere. Yeah, man. I'm, are there any tips you can give me, like like doing a dri- like a residential driveway? Like, I know. don't. I've never ran a boss plow. Um, I don't know how their controllers are. I've never even actually touched one. Uh-huh. I've always had mine is I called a Hineker, which is not too popular. Um, the bosses and the westerns are the most prop- popular. Mm-hmm. Um, mine's like a joystick, kind of like just like you're when you're playing like PlayStation or Xbox. You just got a little joystick. I want to say the boss has like buttons you gotta go up and down, left and right. Um, so it's just a, a touch. Like every, even if you have the same uh, from boss to boss, even every motor is different, and the delay from the joystick to the motor, each each plow is different. Um, it might take like a quick second for when you push the button up to actually the plow goes up. That's just something you got to learn and feel like I still, every, the first snowfall, I always, you're not used to it because you haven't been done it, doing it for a while. So every snowfall I am late on lifting the plow up. So I take like, you know, some of the grass up yeah. when I, it's just is what it is until you get used to it. A touch thing, a feel thing. You'll get used yeah. to it after a while. Like I got my plow on and like two days later the first snowfall came so i was i had really no practice so i just went right into the storm pretty much blind and i didn't know anyone with a plow so i couldn't really ask anything so it was just a very learning uh, storm yeah you just take wow. it slow take it slow and it's fine just watch your edges on the grass and everything mark them out and when you're plowing, keep speed up. Don't be like going like at a snail's pace, which you probably want to, but just don't because you need that momentum to push that snow, especially when it's the first Jackson time. When it's like the first snowfall, when it's mixed with rain, so it's really heavy snow. Oh. That you need more horsepower, more power to push. Oh. Um, you'll get the feel of lifting the snow up, and you got to stack the snow high and far as back as possible. Uh, without chewing the grass up, the first few storms to make way for the, the season of snow so you don't run out of room. That's a big thing. Um, so push the yeah. snow piles back as far as you can to, so you can make some room for and the when snowfall. Putting snow, like like deciding where to put snow, like like what are you looking for? Just like like open grass or like... A, yes. Okay. Don't put it next to like trees and bushes. Um, open open spots of grass is the best um usually at the end of the side and end of the driveway where it meets the street one side usually has like a mailbox the other side is open you can put it there um just anywhere you can just not so you don't damage any trees bushes flowers stuff like that okay when you're going to give an estimate make sure you're like some people have like uh, rocks and flower bed uh, fences and stuff that are close to the close to the driveway. They might have some like landscape lighting. Just be very uh, conscious of that. Um, sprinkler systems, watch out for that because you can dig in. Like last year, I cut someone's uh, invisible dog fence, which oh, yeah. I had no idea. And they they contacted me like a few weeks after the snow and said it wasn't working, which is what it is. Shit happens. But you really yeah. can't see that there's a invisible fence there. So no, yeah. I mean they're cool about it. I had had them as customers for years, so okay. we worked it out. But uh, you just gotta be visual when you do your inspection of the property and kind of figure out where you're gonna put the snow. And sometimes you might have to tell them to move a car to one side or the other. So you can put the snow there. Ah, okay. And when you're going to mark a property, you, you're just kind of like marking where the driveway is or like where the end or Yeah, just the edges of the property. Like I keep my, those orange fiberglass stakes, I keep them about a foot into the grass away from the drive. Okay. Um, that's just my thing. Some guys keep it right on the driveway, but I keep it further away because when I'm plowing my markers, the orange sticks on the plow itself. Um, I can I can see them better with, and I know where they're at. Okay. Um, if there's like an obstruction, like there's like flower bed rocks or something, I'll put like 
two stakes next to it, so I know that it's like danger. It's not just a regular uh. um, area, or if there's like a, a sewer head or something that's super close to the driveway, I'll put two stakes next to it, and that just tells me that be, be you know conscious of this area because something's sort of like there's a hazard there or something. Yeah, that's smart. That's, that's, a good idea. that's just me, so I know. I mean, you learn from your mistakes. For sure, <laughs> There's going to be lots of mistakes, but you'll learn from them. Um, I'm still, you know, learning. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I a couple mean, of years ago, someone thought I had bumped their mailbox, and I wasn't even close to it. And they're trying to come after me, and I squashed it because I had no tire tracks over there, and there's just an old mailbox. And there's always something. Yeah, for sure, dude. Just always when you're backing up. Always pay attention uh, to what you're backing up to for cars. Uh, a lot of cars don't like to stop for you when you're backing out of driveways. They think they always have the right of way. Watch out for other snow plow, like the city plows. And then when it's daylight, watch out for kids. That's ah, a big thing. Yeah. Especially when it's like you're going out, like say right about now, school's out, and kids want to go play in the snow and they make a fort or something in the snow and you don't see them. Uh, especially at the end of the streets. So the big mounds, so you just got to watch out. Yeah. Like sure. a long snowfall and you're out for like, say 20 hours or something. It, 20 hours? Gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I've been out is for that normal? Hours. Or, or like, no, it I depends mean, on how many counts you got and how bad the snow is. Usually you, yeah, my yeah, one right. run is about seven hours or something. If I gotta do that back to back, that's fourteen no, hours. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, forgot you. You got a bigger business. Even if you come home for an hour or two and then go back out, I mean, you're realistic, you're probably not gonna sleep that much. So oh. you you can be out of it, but you just gotta be very conscious of your surroundings and other stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you just gotta be careful backing out. Watch out for kids. Watch out for cars, mailboxes. They those jump out at you. <laughs> um, they do when you i mean you're you work all day then you go plowing and say like two in the morning and then you got a seven hour route you're not getting home to about nine ten in the morning the next morning you're just dead tired yeah your, your brain will hurt my brain hurts after a while because <laughs> i just gotta be focused all the time be yeah. aware of everything for sure man i mean it, you know without sleep then, you know yeah it's it's a thing like, caffeine yeah, helps yeah. for sure um, coffee, energy drinks, whatever, whatever gets you going. For sure, man. When you're driving the truck, like on the road from like job to job, you should angle your plow. Um, so like your driver's edge is pointing out, and then your passenger edge is pointing to your truck, so it's angled. That will help in case um airflow. So like okay. a big thing of like, is a uh, uh, overheating trucks. Because the plow is a big like brick wall, so you're not getting the airflow into your radiator to cool off your engine. So you always got to be conscious of like your engine temperature too. If it starts to go up, you got to turn the heat on, lower the blade a little bit so more air gets into the radiator. You got to you got to figure out something to keep that cool. Pull over to the side for a little bit and let it cool off. Um, like my one truck, my last truck, I had to put a big fan clutch in. A heavy duty one that definitely helped out. Um, some people put uh, an additional electric fan in, so when it reaches a temperature, a, a secondary fan kicks in, so it gives you more air. Or they put a fan in on a switch, so when they see the temperature going up, they just flip a switch in the cab to activate that secondary fan to get more air in. Um, Sometimes if you can get a little lift, like a, a level kit on your truck, that'll raise that front end a little bit, and that'll give you just a little air in the inside the, the radiator. You don't have to bring the plow all the way up as high as it can go while you're traveling from house to house. You can keep it down as long as the blade's not touching, like keep it like six inches or something off the ground, eight inches. That will keep you know more airflow into your engine. Okay. Um, you just you just don't want to overheat. All right. And that's sure. that's something you know I learned from trial and error. Yeah. That was like the first season because my truck kept overheating and I didn't know what was up, so I researched and I found out that the Dodge 
had issues. They had to do a heavy duty fan clutch. So I put one in and it definitely works. Oh, uh, cool. Um, there's this website called Plow. Plowsite.com, I think it is. It's a bunch of dudes around the country that just, it's like a forum. They just talk about different stuff. And I would go on that a lot and kind of research and find the different tricks and stuff. Uh, I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. I still do because it's something to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if you come, if you get your plow on and you want to come over to your parents' house, like I could, you know, run you through a little bit. Ah, uh, sweet, man. Or if, you know, if I get mine on soon, I could, you know, if you're around and it's on, I could, you know, show you how mine works or what I've done to it or whatever. Yeah, man. That'd be um, awesome, man. Um, you know, as long as you're not too busy, I'll take you up on it. Like, if not, I'm like, I'll figure it out, you know, because like, yeah, you know, it, it's, I guess it's true what they say. The, the, the only way to learn is to get time under the seat, you know? It is. It is. Yeah, man. I mean, you just got to get, like, the first couple of years. But since you're a landscaper, you already have, like, an in. But, like, for me, I, had, I didn't know any, I didn't have any clientele. So you already have your foot in the door with some people. And that will definitely help. But getting clients the first year or two just to build up your, your money is uh, is a good thing. Because, I mean, you got bills to pay, you got to pay off the plow. Yeah. Um, you're going to have car repairs. Either it's now or during the season or come springtime, like ball joints. That the plow ate up my ball joints on my other truck. Um, alignments, tie rod ends, all that stuff. I don't know how it is with the Fords with their electronic steering and stuff, but you'll be replacing some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had right. put in heavy duty front shocks on my old truck to make it stiffer to help hold the weight. I put in uh, timbers in the front. It's like big, heavy-duty bump stops that help hold the weight. I put in a level kit to raise the front end about two inches on my old truck to help, you know, with the airflow and hold the weight. So it's just it's just learning stuff. And every truck's a little different. Like my Chevy truck, I haven't done anything because it's got that snowplow prep package. Yeah. And it's it rides really well. Um. My old truck, when I used to raise the plow, it would drop down like three inches. This new truck only drops down three quarters of an inch, which is great. Um, so each brand, each truck's a little different. People are going to tell you not to plow with half-ton trucks, but it's worked for me for many years, and it makes money. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not my full-time job, but during the winter, like that comes first. Nice. But I mean, if you're a landscaper, winter time is your full time job. So you're yeah. you're hoping for every inch of snow. Yep. So I would just you know fine tune a little bit on that contract. Um, just uh, some of the stuff we we talked about, and then sure. I don't know when you get your plow or something on, and you want to come by, or if you're around, we could you know walk through it or make show you some different stuff techniques on how to plow and then back dragging, which you should be good with that down pressure on that boss, which sounds really nice. Awesome, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, Mike, thank you so much, man. I'm not going to take more of your time, man. I mean, dude, your, no, no, your, your knowledge good. is if awesome. If you got any questions, man, text me or give me a call or for email sure. or whatever. For sure, I'll man. Help, help out as much as possible. Hell yeah, man. And if, if you ever need anything like some, some salt from Russo, man, I'll deliver it, whatever you need, man. What kind of beer do you like, man? Nah, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> or, you know it's what I'm all good. Thank you for the offer, though. Uh, or or some, man. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be at <laughs> my parents' house on, on Sunday, man, just to, to kind of... All right. But, well, um, I'll talk to you then if you have any more questions. All right, man. All right. All right have bye. a good day. Thank you, Mike. Right. All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys found some benefit uh, within that interview, that conversation that I had with Mike. He's got a ton of knowledge, and um, you know, uh, that's why I wanted to record it and and share it with you guys because it definitely helped me out. And um, I know some of you guys don't don't have resources like that, um, so just you know, sharing the the knowledge here. Okay, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.
Peace.